Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Much Abru About Nothing, and this week, we are heading to Modern to storm off with Bard class, Gruel Legend Storm, so let's talk about this ridiculous deck, jump into some games, see it in action. So here is our Bard class Legend Storm deck, and the idea of this deck's pretty simple. Fully level up a Bard class. We got some extra mana to help speed it up. If we do, all of our legends come into play with a plus one, plus one counter, which whatever, that's fine. They cost a red and a green less, which is absurd. That is how we get the mana to storm off. It makes most of our deck free, and then level three allows us to draw two cards, essentially. Sure, we gotta plan this turn, they're in exile, but every time we play a legend, we draw two, so we just snowball through our entire deck. Our deck is full of free legends like Ragavan, Zergo, Galea, Rada, Trognart. None of these cards are that insane. Well, Ragavan's that insane. But once we get Bard Class going, they're all zero mana, draw two cards, add a body to the battlefield, which allows us to churn through our entire deck in one big turn. Mox Amber, free and actually generates mana and draws us two cards if we have Bard Class leveled up. Oath and Dissident dig through the deck. We also have some more mana production. Burgi makes mana as we cast spells. Azika lets us tap all of our legends for mana. Groundlord Rada makes a ton of mana when it attacks. Couple of Planeswalkers for value. Only one mana once we get to level two of Bard Class. Domri Anarchabolas, Domri Rod. Good at fighting creatures or main removal. Also does some other stuff as well. And then finally, once we play through our entire deck, we will hit our Samet Voice of Descent. Use Singer Mox Amber Mana will have enough to cast it, plus it only costs three with a level of Bard class, gives all the rest of our team haste, we smash in with all of our plus one, plus one countered free, draw our entire deck board full of legends, kill our opponent in one big attack, otherwise lightning bolts for removal, mana base, couple of cool Kamigawa lands that work with legends, Okina for pumping, Sinka for first strike, sideboard, jank about with Blood Moon, a bunch of removal, some counter hate, some life gain, and that is Bard class. As Legend Storm. I know the deck looks a little bit janky, but oh my goodness, can this deck do some spectacular things? And that's our much brew for this week. So let's jump into the games. See Bard Class Legend Storm in action. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoy it. And I will talk to you soon. Looking for some sweet new Dungeon and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms cards? Well, you can pre order them all now from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, by heading over to cardkingdom.com. Much brew about nothing time. We are playing some more Bard Class Gruel in Modern. Seeing if AFR maybe, maybe can make an impact on the format. You know, we're on the draw. I think we keep this. I mean, we have the Bard Class. We only need one more land, and this hand becomes pretty interesting. Once we get a land, we can play Legends and turn on Bard Class. And we have the Mox Amber. All right, well, let's see. Let's see if we can hit a land in our first two turns. That's a, that is a big question. Planes for our opponent. All right, looks like they're all in on the Grief combo. I mean, opponent mulliganed incredibly aggressively to set this up. Grief, pitching Malakari Birth, takes a Arata, and has the Ephemerate. All right, so opponent's gonna triple Thought Seize, but this is essentially all they have for the rest of the game. I mean, they're down to one card in hand. One card. So we'll see. I mean, hopefully they don't go, like, land off the top Stoneforge or something. Then we probably lose. But just a grief. All right, they take our Bard class, unfortunately. Well, now we need multiple lands. Another Burgi. Well, land, Mox Amber, before our, our opponent Thought Seizes again, pass the turn. All right, well, do we draw mana? Our opponent went all in on this grief. The question is, do we draw mana in time? Losing Rada and Bard class make it worse? Because now just drawing a land doesn't turn on Bard class and Rada, which was kind of what, the, I mean, I don't know. How do you how do you plan on getting triple thought seized <laughs> on turn before you take your second turn? Like, all right, opponent has the land and passes. And well, we do draw a land, so we're, we're getting closer. Pass the turn. Opponent cracks. I mean, it's just not really something you can play around. If it happens, it happens. But it's not like you can be like, okay, they're going to triple thought see, so I'm I'm not going to keep this hand or whatever. Opponent hits us to 17. Land. Tapped. Can we draw land? Yes. Well, Windswept Teeth, crack it. Get a forest. Windswept Teeth, crack it. Get a forest. Burgy. Go. Opponent goes to combat. Hits us. Down to 12. Passes. Well, we will play Domri. Trigger Burgi. Take up Domri. Creature, please. Zergo. Um, 
play the tap land. Do we want to play Zergo? You know what? I think we just dash it. Let's just dash Zergo. Go to combat. Hit ya. Down to 14. Because this turns on the possibility of us discarding the Zergo to Hornfeld. We might be playing the Horn. We'll see what our opponent does. I guess the other option is we might have to fight this grief at some point. All right, going to hit the Domri. Sure. Put him plays land. And oh, hopefully not another grief. Uh, Axis. Okay. Interesting. Double strike. Blah, blah, blah. Well, take up Domri. Well, there's a bard class for the future. When we cast a copy of your instant or sorcery, you can tar return target non-legendary creature. Well, one, two, three, four, five. Harnfeld. Make a mana. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent takes it. Well, kill the grief. A little bit awkward because it means our opponent can potentially Exus it back. Was not expecting Exus. Uh, pass the turn. Opponent goes to combat. I assume they're killing Domri. Yeah, killing Domri. Well, let's see how far we can go with this horn and possibly Bard Glass. About it. Ooh, another grief off the top to take the Zergo. That is actually pretty big for our opponent. All right, so can we even keep the Bard class now? I'm not sure that we can. Yeah, I think we got to discard it. Discard Bard class. Oh, that's awkward. Well, okay, I guess we're Bard classing anyway. Bard class. Make a mana. Play the land. Level up Bard class. <clears throat> Pass the turn. Oh, wow. That grief was huge. We were counting on using that. Oh, we were counting on using that, uh, that Zergo to fuel our Harnfeld, but instead, well, it's going to depend on what we draw here. If we draw a legend, we can potentially go off because we can finish leveling up Bard class. Pwn's going to stay on defense. Hit us for three. I mean, we could potentially go off if we just draw a legend here. Opponent, Godless Shride, untap for some reason, passes. Legend. Okay, Zergo. So that works. One, two, three, four, five. Level up Bard class. Uh, cast a Zergo. Get some triggers. Well, now we just need to keep hitting legends, basically. All right, Oath of Nyssa works. Oath of Nyssa works. That's a legend. Oath of Nyssa. Oath of Nyssa is actually great because this also gets us a card in hand to discard a horn. All right, now I'm feeling... Oh, my God, two lands. That's not great. Oath of Nyssa finds us a Ragavan. Any order. Cast Ragavan. All right, we hit an Oath of Nyssa, so we're still good. We're still good. Oath of Nyssa. <laughs> Full-on legendary storm here at the moment. Virgie. Triggers. Oath of Nyssa. Oh, we should be able to go all the way. Keep an Oath of Nyssa. Get a Galea. Cast it for free. Thanks to Bard Class. Oh, wow. Oh, through the triple Thought Seas. We're going to play our deck here, I think. Uh, Domri. Might as well. Cost one mana. <laughs> yes. Keep it going. Keep it going. Actually free because of Virgie. So there's Domri. Rada for free. Taznar for free. Or Trognar. <laughs> this is so sweet. Another Domri for free. Yeah, keep it, keep it going. I guess eventually we just storm off and hit all of our lightning bolts and win that way. We also are gonna hit mass haste at some point in the near future. Um Mox Amber, draw two. Add an add two extra mana. Basically dark ritual. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll keep that. We will play Araga. Actually, you know what? We play Oath of Nyssa. How many cards? We got 19 cards in our deck. Add a bit of mana. Draw a couple cards. Keep the Oath of Nyssa. Uh, take... Yeah, we'll take a Zika. Why not? And then we will Grand Warlord Rada. Technically costs a mana. <laughs> this is one of the sweetest things I've ever seen. There's Lightning Bolt number two. Uh, then we will tap Mox Amber for green. Play another Mox Amber. Make a bit of mana. Draw a couple cards. <laughs> this is exactly how we drew it up. Uh, we will play Okina. We will play Asika for one mana. Vigilance. Make a little extra mana. Keep drawing through the deck. Um, let's tap Mox Amber for red, play Mox Amber, draw a couple cards, 10 cards in the deck, keep Mox Amber. We will play Oath of Nyssa for free. There, Samet. Keep the Oath of Nyssa. Take a Copper Line Gorge. Doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, Samet for three mana. 
give everything haste. And there's the last lightning bolt. All right, so now we go to combat. Everything has haste. I mean, even if our opponent answers this, we just bolt their face three times. We would like to win with our huge legendary attack. All right, solitude. So we will bolt you. We will bolt you. All right, so we can't win the, the fun way, but we can win the... I mean, I guess this is still the fun way. I mean, we stormed off! That's what we envisioned. Like, Bard class in this deck, draw our entire deck, generate a ton of mana. I mean, that's that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's what this deck wants to do. And that was through the Triple Thought Sea Star. Our opponent had turn one Grief Ephemerate, Triple Thought Seas. And you can see what, I mean, you can see the absurdity. The absurdity of Bard class. It's literally like level it up in the right deck if you build around it and play your deck. We didn't even have to use Horn, really. We use it, what, once? Uh, but it wasn't even like necessary or important. That was all Bard class. Like once we get to this point, that's what our deck should be able to do relatively consistently. There is some risk that we hit like four lands in a row to start, but once we get going, as you saw there, we literally just played through our entire deck. We played through our entire deck. We built a massive hasty board. Our opponent did have the answer to the Samet, but that's fine. We just bolted their face a bunch of times and won that way. So that was, that was, that was spectacular. That was spectacular. What do we want against this deck, though? Oh, we don't really have a great answer to Grief Ephemerate. I mean, I guess Veil of Summer, maybe? It's not even that exciting. Probably Removal, a Braid, Sinkhole. What can we cut? We do need to keep a critical mass of Legends. Maybe we don't Sinkhole. Maybe we just a Braid. Is Veil of Summer worth it? Like, actually, I don't even think it's worth it on the draw because our opponent can just grief ephemerate before we can before we can uh veil of summer we won't even have any mana we can go down the zika and maybe one domri let's just do that let's bring in a tiny bit more removal run it back and hope that we can just do that again because that was insane oh that was so sweet that was so sweet Ugh, lots of bard classes but new lands you know what's really good at punishing mulligans grief and ephemerate all right well i mean this hand's good but will it <laughs> Will it stay that way? No. Grief, pitches, undying evil. Well, here comes the triple thought sees again. I mean, it does seem like our opponent is very all in on this plan to the point where last game they mulliganed into oblivion to pull this off. All right, they, they found the combo. <laughs> oh, God. Well, let's see if it takes the bard class. Opponent passes. I'll play the land past the turn. Yeah, maybe maybe one of these games they will not have it. That would be sweet. Didn't play the Mox Amber, because if they want to take it, I think we're okay with that. Well, come on, Bard Glass. <laughs> Number two, opponent takes the Burgie. Plays a Swamp. Oh, opponent has the full nut draw. Okay. Well, this hand we are not going to beat, because they can just get Cauldra here, and we cannot answer that. We got to draw a removal spell for Stoneforge. Oh, only get sort of Fire Nice. Well, that's, I guess, better than Cauldra, sort of. Um, what did foothills? Hmm. Yes, yeah, isn't this isn't good. I mean, what are you supposed to do when you get triple thought seized? This time our opponent had even the fuller combo, triple thought seized and stone forge. So they they actually have a, a cl faster clock to back it up this game. So they're probably going to win. The odds of having grief in your opening hand are not that high, though. Not that high that it should happen every single game. Now well, we draw a lightning bolt. Unfortunately, a turn too late. Play Mox Amber. Play Domri. Pass the turn. I mean, we can kill whatever our opponent goes to equip the sword to, but the sword's still going to be sitting out. Well, we need to we need to find Bard class. We need to find Bard class. That is the TLDR here. Opponent. Maybe they already have Cauldra in hand, and then we're just dead. All right, Sword of Fire Knight, sure. At least it's not a Cauldra. Hopefully they equip it to Grief, but we'll kill whatever the sword goes on. Wow, opponent's not going to equip. Text Domri, text Domri. Well, we will bolt the Grief. <laughs> Undying Evil, sure. <laughs> Gets it back, yeah, yeah, yeah. Domri takes one. About it passes. We draw nothing, unfortunately. Yeah, now the sword hits come and we're pretty pretty dead. Wins up deep, within the deck, past the turn. Opponent untaps, has a sword, knows that they can equip the sword, puts the sword on Stoneforge to start drawing cards. Goes attacking, kills our stuff. I mean, we're sticking around for the moment because if we draw Bard class, there's still a shot that we could combo, but I mean, this is going to be over super quick. We have like a turn, maybe? Mox Amber, sure. Now we don't have enough time to do anything. Well, okay. 
we're going to bring in the Vale of Summers being on the play because as we've seen in both of those games, our opponent is willing to mulligan incredibly aggressively to try to to try to get that exact start. Like our opponent is willing to mulligan into oblivion. Eh, I guess we got to go down one oath of Nissa. Run it like that. All right, well, we're on the play. Maybe our opponent will not have it for once. That would be sweet. Okay, well, I guess the good news is we have a Ragavan. And if our opponent, well, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. I mean, this hand's great, minus infinite thought seizes. Uh, all right, so, Sinka, Mox Amber, Ragavan, go. Would love to get down this Bard class before we get thought seized out of the game. Marsh Flats, opponent, whoa, appears not to have it for once. Well, in that case, Windswept Heath, crack Windswept Heath, get a forest, go to combat, hit ya, get a treasure, a dam that we don't really want. Well, we are going to play Bard class. I think we do not level up this turn though. Opponent cracks Marsh Flats. I think we don't level up to leave up the Abraid. Opponent, Marsh Flats, pass it. Well, let's see what we find. Wooded Foothills. Well, go to combat, attack ya. Get a treasure and exile a land. I'll play Wooded Foothills, crack Wooded Foothills. Get a forest. Level up Bard class. And, huh. Play a horn? Pass the turn. I mean, there is some chance we get to combo next turn. Opponent got the shrine tapped. And now we don't especially care about our opponent going off with Grief Ephemerate. Opponent passing. Land. I'll go to combat. Hit you with Ragavan. Get a treasure. Steal a charming prince. Well, one, two, three, four, five. Level a bard class. Discard a land. Taznar. Uh, Mox Amber. Keep the new one. Um, add a mana. Domri. Uh, Zergo. We would like to find our other Burgi to start making mana. Uh, Oath of Nessa. Take a land. Oh, we would have liked the Mox Amber. Um, well, Oath of Nessa. Keep it going, keep it going. Exile. And opponent, they see what's happening. <laughs> it's working. It's working. That was, that's so, oh man. It's like Legendary Storm. It's like Legendary Storm. Through the Grief Ephemerids. Oh my goodness, that was sweet. Well. Well, well, well. Hey, <laughs> Barcast Gruel. Not bad at all. Wow. Much ado about nothing time. We are playing some Bard Class Gruel. Ooh, Valakid, eh? This should be interesting. So we got our Bard Class, which is nice. Now, well, Windswept Teeth. Crack it. Stomping Grounds untapped. Zergo. Go. Stomping Grounds for our opponent untapped. Question's gonna be are we fast enough? Sakura Tribe Elder. Play Mox Amber. Play Bard Class. Play Mox Amber. Play Windswept Teeth. Get a Forest. Level up Bard Class. Go to Combat Hit ya. Still need a bit more mana for the last mode, which could be an issue. Block Sacks gets a land. Velicat. Please not Dryad. Search for tomorrow. This is gonna be, this is gonna be close. Get some Mountain. But it passes. Well, we will Wooded Foothills. Play Domri for one mana. Take up Domri. Get a Burgi. One, two, three. Uh, hmm. The problem is Primeval Titan coming down. Play Burgi for two mana. Wooded Foothills. Get a one, two, three. Get a mountain. Actually, let's get a let's get a forest. Dash Ragavan for one mana. Domri for one mana. Go to combat, hit ya. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! We were not counting on that lightning bolt. Well, okay, pass the turd. Oh, this means we gotta draw a free legend, assuming we even get to untap because premium Titan. Yeah, here comes prime time. Well, they can't Valakut us this turn because, well, we'll see. We just got a combo. We just got a combo. We can level up Bard class to the last mode. We just need to find a free legend to start the combo, and we should be able to combo kill. All right, all right, all right. Opponent passes. Not exactly free. I'll take up Domri. Whiff. Yeah, we're a mana short. Tick up. Yeah, we don't live another turn, do we? We fizzled? 
Because we need one mana for this. Play Clothis for one mana. Yeah. Wow. We drew a legend that cost a mana, and that is going to cost us a game. Oh, we were so close to just comboing. But now they get to Primeval Titan. They get to start double valicating, and I don't think we can survive double valicate. We're just, okay. Now we're literally dead. Yep. Oh. I mean, we were really close to turn four combo kill. If that Clothis was Ragavan Zergo, Oath of Nyssa, Galea, Rada, Tognar, we win the game. So we actually arguably got a little bit unlucky that we drew one of the ones we couldn't cast. Oh, Blood Moon's in. Blood Moon's in. Lightning Bolt's out. Uh, you know what? Let's get on another Lightning Bolt and bring in Magmatic Sinkhole because it can kill Dryad of the Ilsen Grove. Oh, Oh, wow. We were so close. I mean, decent chance. And they had to have the bolt for the Ragavan. Like, we were not counting on that. We thought we could dash Ragavan, get the treasure. That would have made sure we had enough mana to even if we draw, if we draw any legend, essentially, outside of like Grand Lord or Water or Samet, we would be able to uh, to start comboing. And we had the Burgie, so we would have, it would have won us the game. All right, well, we're going to Blood Moon our opponent. And we're going to trust that Blood Mooning our opponent wins us this game. We're going to play Ragavan on turn one. If they bold it, they bold it. We don't have a Bard class, unfortunately. Uh, so, Copperline, George, and Ragavan. Go. Yeah. Mountain. Has the bolt, of course. Uh, well, Windswept Teeth. Crack Windswept Teeth. Get a Forest. And Oath of Nyssa finds a Ragavan. Replay Ragavan. Pass the turn. All right. Opponent passes. That's good that it's not a basic Forest. Well, we will go to combat, attack. Do you have bolt number two? Looks like no. Get a treasure. Get rid of a stomping rounds. So well, land and blood moon you. Go. Well, let's see if they got basic for us. Opponent has force of vigor. Now, the bad news for our opponent is we do have another blood moon. Mountain. Dryad. Well, blood moon number two. Pass the turn. Opponent playing the mountains. So Blood Moon came down after the Dryad, so it it wins. It wins the battle. Wait, that's not correct. Huh, is Moto bugged? Our opponent doesn't have any green mana. Oh, the basics, I see. Yeah, so the basics are unaffected. So our opponent's able to cast Farseek thanks to the mountains being forests. Because it, Blood Moon's only turning off the non-basics. Play a land. Play Domri. Tick up Domri. Add whatever. Uh, play Zergo? Eh, I don't think there's any reason to play it. We'll just pass. We'd like to draw something big enough to fight the Dryad. That'd be sweet. Mountain. Summoner's Pact. Kind of ridiculous that this is working out for our opponent. <laughs> oh, the power of Dryad. I really, I really dislike Dryad of the Ilsen Grove. It does cool things in like some janky decks, but. Uh, Probably a little too good at what it does. I mean, it was designed in 2020, so of course it's too good for what it does. About it. Yeah, I think this one's... Boy, we need that combo in game one. In this game, we just haven't found the Bard class. And the Blood Moon, while it's helpful, it is not winning us this game. Because our opponent's still just casting Primeval Titans, thanks to the absurdity of... The absurdity that is Dried of the Ilsen Grove. Uh, we will pass the turn. Yeah, opponent casting green spells with no green mana is something... Opponent gets to pay. Yup, yup, yup. I mean, we're just running out of time. Like, the Primeval Titan, even with our opponent being unable to Valakut, the Primeval Titan is a clock that is going to be able to win the game. Opponent going to get in and hit the Domri. Get more lands. And this is also thinning the deck, so if our opponent ever gets rid of Blood Moon, they're probably just going to be able to Valakut kill immediately. Gets Mountains, sure. We lose Domri. Come on, Bark Glass! Grand Warlord Arada. I mean, we might as well play Rada. Since our Domri's gone, it still can't actually attack. Um, we'll play Zergo. Go. About it. Untaps. Plays a Mountainous Valakut. And Sweltering Suns. About it. No attacks. Bard Glass. Land. Uh-oh. Well, the Flood is on, which is not ideal. About it. I mean, Primeval Dine is still a 6-6 Trample. Gets and hits us. Gets lands. 
Yeah, we are we're getting short on time to find this bard class opponent. Yeah, down to 13. Sakura Tribe Elder. Tap land. We draw. Oh my god, another land. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Not like this! We were so close to going infinite in game one. One mana off. And then this game, our opponent found the Dryad. We have not found removal for the Dryad. And uh, they're just going to town with this Primeval Titan. And we have drawn, we're keeping up on, on this Primeval Titan with land somehow in our 19 land deck. <laughs> Oh, phone it. Sure. Gets more lands. Hits us to seven. Well, we're dead next turn unless we top deck. What do we... F oh, wait. Opponent. More Sakura Tribe Elders. We draw land number 40, and sometimes it's just not meant to be, and I think this is one of those times. Whoa! Whoa! Oh my goodness! Really? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That is an insane amount of our 19 lands in a row. Like, didn't we draw lands for what, like five out of four out of five turns or something? We drew one Rada, and every other turn was lands. And then we drew the Sinka, and our next four cards were also lands. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't matter what you do. You just were not destined to win. <laughs> so close in game one, though. Much rude about nothing time. We are. Yeah, Keeping. We are trying some <laughs> some adventures in the Forgotten Realm in modern with Bard class. Bard class gruel. We don't have a bard class, but this hand's reasonable. I mean we got a we got a Ragavan. I mean, life with a Ragavan can never be too bad. Ooh, and our opponent has a tap land, that's even better. So we get to get in hits with the Ragavan. Uh well, go to combat, hit ya. Still would like to find Bard class, but hit our opponent. Exile land. Well, windswept teeth. Crack windswept teeth. Get a forest. Tognar. Go. I mean, if our opponent taps down, we could potentially just pre-combat Rada and get in a pretty ferocious attack here. Scalding Tarn. Opponent cracks it. Steam vents. Ooh, untap down to 15. Okay. Renin six. All right, so opponent kills Ragavan, but this is okay-ish. Because we get to windswept teeth, crack windswept teeth, get a stomping grounds, untapped. Grand Warlord Rada. Kill Ren and Six at our opponent. Make some green mana. Oath of Nyssa. Get Domri. And we'll just pass. All right. I mean, this is a pretty fast start for our deck. We could have played another Oath of Nyssa. I don't think we need to, though. Snow Covered Plains. It's a fairy time raveler. Opponent's just trying to stay alive. All right. Bounces Tognar. Uh, wooded Foothills. Crack Wooded Foothills. Get a mountain. Play a Sika. Go to combat. Hit our opponent. Add a mana and Domri. And take it up. Oath of Nyssa. Um, yeah, we'll take Rada, I guess. Pass the turn. All right, opponent. <laughs> Let's see what you got. This has actually felt pretty good. We haven't even had our namesake card. We've just been able to put on a decent amount of pressure, even through a lot of planeswalkers. Uh, opponent, flood its rain, cracks it, land, and prismatic ending, picks up to fairy, uh, opponent, passing, land, hmm, well, unfortunately, I think we do have to kill to fairy, so kill to fairy, play Rada, play Tagnar, take up Damri, go, <sighs> alright, no rest, no rest, no removal, just die peacefully. <laughs> About it. I mean, we are presenting janky legendary lethal. Breeding pool. Untap down to six. Jace bounces. About it. Still staying alive. Goes to one. Oh, 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 that is good. So, go to combat. Yeah, lightning bolt is not the worst draw. Hit Jace. Hit our opponent. Make some mana. Eh. Actually, we're not going to spend it anyway, so. Opponent. Down to three. Oh, the question is, when do we cast it? Uh, take up to fairy. Replay. 
Trognar. Play the land. I don't think we cast it yet. I think we wait because of Force of Negation. Force of Negation could get us, and our opponent theoretically could be playing it. I mean, we're presenting lethal on board. Opponent passes. Ooh, there's there's bard class. Go to combat. All right, cryptic tap draw. Sure, uh, we will play bard class. Opponent spell snares. Ugh, we gotta go for it. We gotta go for it. Bolt you. All right, no force of negation, and we got there. So our opponent definitely did a good job of annoying us, but in the end, well, Blood Moon's Veil of Summer's in. What are we cutting? We'll go down to Zika. We'll go down. Hmm. Maybe one Mox Amber. Maybe one Rada. Uh, one Domri, and eh. One oath and let's let's run it like that. The Blood Moon is big against our opponent's deck because our opponent's full on five color. Uh, that actually went pretty well. Oh, we got a Ragavan. Can't ask for a whole lot more than that. Baluda Delta for our opponent and passes. Um, I want Copper Line Gorge, Mox Amber, and I mean, yeah, play Ragavan. Yo, please live, please live, monkey. <laughs> Ragavan living is so powerful. It's no cover planes. Ed has a removal spell. Sure. Oh, we draw. Lightning bolt. Not the most helpful. I'll pass the turn. About it. Flooded strand. And passes. Oh, crack wind swept teeth. Get a forest. Um, yeah, play wind swept teeth. Play Zergo. Not quite as good as Ragavan, but <laughs> I guess a okay backup. Pass the turn. Oh, opponent cracks. Could use some action. Could use a bard class. Our whole deck is built around bard class, and so far we haven't done a good job at finding it. Scalding turn for our opponent and passing. Well, thin the deck. Get a forest. That is the downside of Mox Amber. Is definitely not good in multiples. Well, get him with Zergo. Hit you. Yeah, pass the turn. The Samet could do something eventually. Opponent. Boy, Blood Moon is looking so appealing. Watery Grave. Tapped. Opponent. Passes. Oh, jeez. Well, Mox Amber. Play a Mox Amber. Keep a new one. Oh, this always is what happens when we Mox Amber. Samet. Always, always drawing a bunch of them in a row. Well, they're all gone now, so we're going to stop drawing them. <laughs> because all three are gone. About it. Cryptic. Well, we will Veil of Summer. Go to combat. Hit you for a bunch. And you know, let's play another Mox Amber. Pass the turn. Opponents getting close to being lethal. They need a Wrath or something. Down to seven. Even with us Mox Amber flooding. Uh-oh. 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 All five colors of mana. We got a Niv. Explosives on one. Okay. About it. So I blow up the Zergo. Opponent passes. I'll go to combat. Attack. Okay, blows up Zergo. Sure. Goes to one. Because no one can answer the Samet. Uh, let's... Domri? I think we're we're going to win this. Our janky legend pile is going to take down this... <laughs> five color control vial. No one expects the Samet. No one does. Opponent. Domri. Resolves. Take it up. Not gonna bolt yet. Gonna remain patient. I know, so I'm sure there's gonna be like yelling of like, oh, if you played it pre combat, it would have been lethal. That's true. But if we played it pre combat, we get super blown out by cryptic. Cryptic, counter, tap. Oh my goodness. That is, that is the nightmare because we don't get the damage and we lose Domri. So I know it looked like we'd have lethal, but I, I actually think it's. It's way safer slash better to wait. Yeah. I mean, I think this is fine. So they can Teferi bounce Samet. Sure. About it. Passes. But we get to uncounterably Samet. And now our opponent needs an answer. And if they do answer, then they also need to answer the lightning bolt. Path to exile on Samet. Well, okay. Well, in that case, uh, lightning bolt you. And done. <laughs> Okay, so we didn't get to go off with Bard class, but that was actually kind of an impressive performance for our 
Motley crew of, I mean, we're playing Samet. Like, Samet was the hero. Samet, voice of dissent, hero of a game of modern. I, I don't know if that's ever happened before. <laughs> All right. Uh, sweet, 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 sweet. Much brew about nothing time. We are playing some bard class gruel in modern. And uh, no bard class, but we got some gruel. It's demons for our about it. Monastery Schwiffspiel gets and hits us. Well, what if I else crack it for a bull, a uh, mountain, and bull. Oh, boot it. Bloodstained Mire. Cracks it. Gets a mountain and Swift Spear. And Dragon's Rage Channeler. Opponent goes attacking. Well, we will bolt Dragon's Rage Channeler. Forest. Oath of Nyssa. Go digging mostly for a land, I think. All right, so, so much for the land idea, but we got the non-lands out of the way. <laughs> Ooh, about it. Serum Visions hits us. Land, please. All right, we find the land. So we will play, I think, Azika, which at least is a pretty good blocker for the Swift Spear, sort of. Pass the turn. About it. I actually don't think we want to block here. We actually want Azika to live for one more turn. Opponent hits us, 14, and passes. All right, so Windswept Teeth. Crack it. Because this lets us have kind of a sweet turn where we get to Grand Warlord Rada. Go to combat. Attack. Make some mana. Hit ya. Play a Domri. Oh, let's just tick up. I'm afraid to fight because they have instant speed stuff. Mox Amber on top. All right, pass the turn. About it. All right, going to try to do a little combo turn here. Metamorphose and expressive iteration. I mean, if they go to kill our Domri, I think we let it go. Oh, we really want a bard class. Opponent gets a land, plays a land, goes to combat, attacks face. We take it down to 10. Opponent passes. Oh, we will. Mox Amber. Take up Domri. Whiff again. Play new Domri. Dash Zergo. Go to combat. Hit ya. Make some mana. That's not doing much, but hit you for a bunch. And then Domri. Fight the Swift Spear. Okay, mutagenic growth. So that does keep the Swift Spear alive, but our opponents hit two. Two points of life. That is not many points of life. About it. Combat. Attacks. Well, I mean, we are going to block. If our opponent has shenanigans, they have shenanigans, but we're not going to get janked out. Technically, Dash Zergo is lethal. About it. Cat Mutagenic Growth. Bolts Azika. Sure. So opponent managed to kill the Azika. And gets down a Stormwing Entity. That is a massive draw for our opponent. Massive. Well, Domri. Take it up. With again, oh, land dash Zergo. I wonder if we misplayed. It's possible that we should have tried to kill the Swift Spear. That might be a misplay. We could have Zergo fight, fought Swift Spear and still forced our opponent to uh, to block. Well, attack with Zergo, opponent has to block. Yeah, we might end up regretting not killing that Swift Spear. Wow, we've had not ideal cards on the top of our deck here. Pass the turn. Opponent attacks. Dragon's Rage Channeler. Opponent goes attacking. Well, we're definitely shuffling, shuffling away Domri number 40. Lava Dart. Surveils. Mills a bobble. Down to nine. Hits us. Down to seven. Well, crack wooded foothills down to six. Get a stomping grounds tapped. Shuffle away Domri. Untap. Real draw. No. Well, take up Domri. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> that was insanely brutal. <laughs> the top cards of our deck were as bad as imaginable. <laughs> like, I almost cannot believe how unfortunate the top cards of our library were that game. Whiff, 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 whiff with Domri for like four turns in a row. And then, of course, we also managed to... <laughs> we also managed to draw two Mox Ambers in a row on that critical turn after shuffling away another dead draw. Oh my god. The odds of hitting with Domri aren't insane in this deck, but they are better than 0%. Ugh, ugh. 
Uh oh. Mox Amber is a uh, incredibly frustrating card. It does very powerful things, but it also is unimaginably horrible. And uh, wow, my goodness, how can our 19 land deck be doing this? This does not even this does not even make any amount of sense. It does not seem possible to me. Well, what if foothills? Crag, what if foothills? Get yeah, a stomping grounds. Untapped. Play a Ragavan to its. Well, you know what? Let's just play Othan as a. Yeah, let's just play Othan as a. Boy, that was some. That was some. Bad running. We will take, all right, three more lands in a row. Well, two lands and a Mox Amber. Pass the turn. Oh, boot it. Would be nice to find a Bard class. That's what this is all about. Opponent. Mountain. Soul Scar Mage. Keep playing them one drops. Opponent passes. Well, we finally drew a Bard class. All right, let's play a Bard class. We do need mana to uh, to get it to its last level. We'll see. Our opponent's deck can deal a absurd amount of damage. So it is possible that we just get burnt out before we can actually turn on Bard class. Opponent cracks the land, gets a Steam Vents, Manamorpho, Stormwing Entity, puke, puke, puke. Oh, and a Bobble. Yeah. And cracks it. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to live long enough. All right, at least there's no Stormwing Entity. I mean, the Soul Scar Mage still dealing some damage. Getting in a hit with Ragavan would be super big. Ooh. Oh, even a dash hit is super big. Opponent draws a card, because that gets us a mana that we need. All right, so we will Sinka. This gives us a shot. Sinka, level up Bard class. Dash Ragavan. Hit ya. Get a treasure. Mess with your Scry. And yeah, we're just gonna pass. Okay, well, we'll see, opponent. We have two free legends in hand. Expressive iteration. We have two free legends in hand. We can get to the last mode of Bard class. We're not gonna have any mana left over, which could be an issue, opponent. Channeler hits us, yeah. Okay, we draw. Ooh, a lightning bolt, that's interesting. Well, play the land, crack the land. Get a forest, down to 10. One, two, three, four, five. Level up Bard class. Zergo. Okay, there's Mox Amber is actually really big here. Mox Amber. That actually gives us, now we want a Burgie, I think. Mox Amber, Oath of Nyssa. There's the Burgie. Go digging. Take Free Legend, Rada. We might be able to get there. Burgie. It should be one mana, right? Oh, it's two mana. Oh no. Oh no, oh no. Oh no, oh no. You're right. We can't Burgie. That's right. Rada for free. So we need another Mox Amber. Tognar. Well, Ragavan. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we just Bolt Dragon's Rage Channeler. Opponent has mutagenic growth. Well, we had a good turn. Is it going to be good enough? Yeah. We had to go off a little early without as much mana. If we had one more mana, we would have went infinite, infinite. But because we're under so much pressure, we just had to go. I mean, that was still a pretty good turn four. We went from having a bard class and nothing to having four creatures. An opponent. Lightning bolt. Wow, are they just going to have enough burn to win? That's awkward. Surveils. And mutagenic growth. Yeah, well, looks like they just have the full-on combo kill. We even had the removal spell for the channeler, but our opponent had multiple mutagenic rows. And Metamorphose leaves the card on top. Is this a little little rubbin? Or are we actually express? Okay. Well, I mean, technically we're not dead on board. I don't know if our opponent's doing this as a flex and they have lethal or if they're actually trying to dig to find lethal. Not clear on that. If we untap here and draw any legend, decent chance we just go fully infinite because we actually have all our mana. Soul Scar Mage. Land. Cracks it. If this ends with Lava Dart and they just had it the whole time, I'm going to be a little disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> about it what do you got i mean the other issue is we got rid of a lot of lands but we could un okay not dead we could untap and not draw a legend and then we're very sad ragavan works ragavan works so how do we want to do this i'll cast ragavan exile a couple cards all right now we should be good keep the old ragavan Galia, draw a couple cards. An opponent sees death coming, and we managed to survive. Our turn was big enough. I thought our opponent was going to get us. If they had a Lava Dart or another Bolt, with how aggressively they fired off that Mutagenic Growth, I thought they just had lethal. They just pulled our face Mutagenic Growth, but then did not actually have enough to kill us. Whew. All right. 
Well, we gotta do it one more time. I'm almost tempted to bring in Chalice of the Void, because Chalice on one is insane against our opponent's deck. The problem is, it's also pretty good against our deck. <laughs> we also, ah, it might still be worth it though. Like Chalice on one shuts down their deck. They do not have much without, hmm. Ah, it's worse on the draw. You know what, let's just, let's just run it back. Let's run it back, try combo off. Bard class, do your thing. Bard class is pretty busted. Well, Weather the Storm is interesting. I kind of like this hand. We can bolt the first threat. Weather the Storm at some point can gain us life. Maybe we can get an Aragavon dash at some point. About it. Soul Scar Mage. Well, Copperline Gorge and bolt it. I mean, if they use Mutagenic Growth, then we got it out of their hand for no damage and that's still good. I lit for our opponent. All right, here comes Stormwing Entity, probably. Yeah, yeah, it's not good. Definitely not good. A boot, it passes. We draw Bard Class, Lightning Bolt. Ugh. The problem is they clearly showed the mutagenic growth. You could see them thinking about casting it. Like there was the delay, which they had to have a free spell that they could be casting for that to even happen. So I think we gotta wait. Dragon's Rage Channeler, Mishra's Bobble. On the other end, if our opponent casts a bunch of spells, we can just weather the storm and gain some life to buy us time, which isn't bad. I guess we might be better off. Yeah, I think we gotta bolt the Dragon's Rage Channeler, actually. Before the artifact hits the graveyard, and then Metagenic Growth can protect it. This does mean we're not weathering the storm this turn. Hits us for four. We take it to 16. Well, thin the deck. Get a forest in case there's a blood moon. Untap. Opponent, gonna take a peek at our draw. A braid. Hmm. Well, let's just Stomping Grounds tapped. I think we gotta stay patient for now. See if we can get a window to kill this Stormwing, maybe, or at least gain a bunch of life with Weather of the Storm. Opponent, Expressive Iteration. Grows the Stormwing. Well, the more spells our opponent casts, the better, I think, at the moment. Gets a bobble, plays the bobble. Plays a bobble. Goes to combat. Hits us for six. Uh, we probably gotta weather the storm. Uh, weather the storm, gain 12. Up to 21, untap. Opponent cracks the bobble. We know there's a mutagenic growth in hand. All right, another land. Um, Windswept teeth, crack it, get a forest. Dash Ragavan. Go to combat, attack. Opponent, lightning bolt. I mean, I think this is when we gotta do it. Get the mutagenic growth out of their hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we'll see. We're getting our opponent low on cards, which is something. Opponent does get to draw some more because, you know, Mishra's Bobble, pretty insane. Actually, back up to four cards in hand. We did nothing. <laughs> Life is meaningless. <laughs> Every spell we cast does nothing in a world of Mishra's Bobbles. About it. Goes to combat attacks, hits us. We draw a Zergo, not very helpful. Well, we'll play Domri Raid. We'll play Wooded Foothills. We'll take up Domri. We will pass the turn. Yeah, Stormy Entity is obnoxious. Just the prowess makes it so ridiculously hard to kill. And our opponent just draws so many cards. It feels like everything we do just does not actually matter. About it. Goes attacking. It's the Domri. Infinite cards still in hand. Well, sure, we'll draw the Abrade. We will pass the turd. Abrade, not going to be able to kill Stormwing because, you know, prowess. Opponent plays the tap land. Goes to combat. Attacks. Sure, down to 12. Crag Wood and Foothills. Opponent's got to be holding a bunch of burn in hand. We'll get a stomping rounds. Thin the deck. Untap. Draw a Bard Glass. We'll play Bard Glass. Level up Bard class. See if we live. If we live, we got a shot at comboing next turn. I don't expect it though. Opponent, four cards in hand. Yeah, Lavadar, so that's nine dead. That was close, we were so close. Oh my God, we were gonna draw all lands anyway. All right, fair enough. Much brew about nothing time. We are bard classing in modern. Well, no bard class, but Ragavan is, that is a card. And I guess worst case, we can try to get to this horn to find bard class. Sadly, we do not have our namesake card though. I don't play Ragavan. Opponents on a Lurus deck could be essentially anything. 25% of the modern decks play Lurus in one form or another. Abodent. Blood Crypt, untapped. Dragon's Rage Channeler. Well, play Okina, go to combat attack. Okina, block that, block that. Boom, pump it. 
out of here. Out of here. <laughs> that was actually pretty sweet. <laughs> Akita, the forgotten Kamigawa land coming through opponents. Explosives on one. Sure. Well, let's go to combat attack, see what we hit. Get a treasure, steal a Snapcaster. Uh, well, we're not going to play Snapcaster. I think we will just Wooded Foothills, crack it, get a Forest, play Domri, take it up, get a Zika. Yeah, I mean, pass the turn. If our opponent wants to spend two mana, well, I guess it'll be even more than that overall, but if they want to engineer explosives the way our Aragavan, we're kind of okay with that. And this Domri provides an interesting amount of pressure against a controlling deck, Bobble, of course. Cracks it. Are we fetching? No. All right, opponent's passing. Oh, we untap. Opponent gets to draw. Okay, now they're gonna fetch. Gets an island. Well, I mean, go to combat, attack. Engineered explosives, sure. Take up, take up Domri. Land that we don't want. Windswept teeth. Crack windswept teeth. Stomping grounds untapped. And yeah, I mean, we're gonna go for it. Horn. Pass the turn. All right, no killing of the horn. No Coligan's commands. Next stop, bard class, hopefully. Calling darn for our opponent. Unearth Dragon's Rage Channeler. Okay. Bobble. Bobble's gonna end up getting itself banned in modern. Bobble Manamorphose. Opponent cracks, passes, draws a card. Well, we will discard Copper Line Gorge. Take up Domri. Get. Galea. Are we discarding this Copper Line Gorge? Probably. We really just want to find Bard class. Discard Horn. Bolt Dragon's Rage Channeler. Play Mox Amber. Play Zergo. And I think we dash Ragavan. Dash Ragavan. All right, there's the counter. I'll play the forest. Pass the turn. Okay, I mean, we got the pressure on. Still haven't found the Bard class, but other than not finding the Bard class, this game is going pretty well. Watery Grave tapped. Opponent untaps. Opponent has two turns to deal with this Domri. If Domri ultimates, our opponent essentially just loses. All right, opponent passing. We draw. Bard class? Bard class. Okay. So take up Domri. Nothing. I think we discard a Sika. Wooded Foothill. Bard class. Level it up. Ragavan. Dash it. Do you have more answers? All right, so opponent staying alive ish. Crack this. Get him out and run out. Galea. Oh, yeah, we didn't even need to spend mana, did we? Replay Domri. Take up Domri. Go to combat. Hit ya. All right. Well, opponent managed to survive the Domri. The problem our opponent's going to have is we're about to go off with Bard class. Like, play our entire deck go off with Bard class. Can they deal with it? Okay. Kills Domri. Actually not essential to our plans. Opponent's passing. All right. Let's, uh, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. All right. So, one, two, three, four, five. Bard class, level three. Uh, Rada, trigger Bard class. Oath of Nyssa, four free. Go digging, get a Ragavan. Uh, Ragavan, four free. <laughs> Uh-oh, little a little bit of a flood. Uh, we will play, actually, no, let's uh, discard Windswept Teeth. Oath of Nyssa, four free. Keep an Oath of Nyssa. Get a Zergo, Zergo for free. Keep the old one. Mox Amber. Draw a couple cards. We will play a land. Actually, let's play Shinka. Um, play Galia. Free. Draw a couple cards. And opponent, they see where this is heading. They see the legendary storm and scoops it up. Ooh, boy. When you go off with this deck, it is so sweet. It's so sweet. Ooh, Blood Moon actually feels good against our opponent's deck, doesn't it? It does feel like it would be good. So I think Blood Moon's in. Go down Azika. Go down one Domri. Go down one Oath of Nyssa. And then we probably need a little bit more. A little. Let's go one more Domri for the Clothis. And we probably need to go down one Mox Amber for a Braid. We probably need a little bit more removal. And one Zergo for a Braid. Something to keep in mind if you sideboard with this deck. 
you do need to make sure you keep enough legends. If you just sideboard out all the legends, there is definitely a risk that that uh, the synergies will not work and bard class won't be good enough. Uh, so that is that is a concern. I guess this hand's fine. We don't have a bard class, but we can deal with our opponent's first threats. Seems like there's some sort of like Grixis Delver deck or something. Explosives on one, sure. Um, Stomping grounds, tapped, go. Creeping tar pit. Maybe our opponent's just full on control. Well, I mean, windswept teeth. Crack it for a forest. And I think we just dash Zergo. Zergo with dash. Chip in for a bit of damage. If our opponent kills it, we're pretty fine with that. Opponent kills it, but that's fine. Well, let's see if we can resolve it. Domri. Domri would be good against our opponent's deck. Opponent passes. What if I else crack it? Get a forest. Domri, do we have a counter? Domri does help us get through counters with creatures in the future. Opponent's thinking about whether it's worth countering or not. All right, opponent, spell pierce. Good news is, opponent is down to three cards in hand. Like, they're gonna run out of interaction eventually. Opponent, drown catacombs. We draw, Galia. Well, yeah, let's play it. Go attacking. Actually, let's play Mox Amber. <laughs> All right, Snapcaster, fatal push. Oh, they're gonna spell pierce. Okay, yeah, we're we're fine with this. Sure, spell pierce. Yeah. Well, we'll go attacking. Opponent trades two cards in hand. I mean, if we run them out of action, we can start resolving stuff, which would be sweet. Opponent, steam vents untapped on her Snapcaster for some reason. Not a hundred percent sure the point of that, but. Okay, target's on Earth, and passes. Not getting the Luris. Well, we will play Galea. All right, we ran him out of cards. Opponent has zero, zero, zero cards in hand. They are all gone. Opponent untaps. Fires up Tar Pit, certainly. Land, gonna hit us, sure. Well, come on, action. Down to 13. Opponent passes. Yeah, that is a bard class. I don't play bard class. Level up bard class. Pass the turn. Opponent cracks polluted delta. We're close. We're super close. Opponent untaps. They can get the Luris at some point, but we still do have two removal spells in hand. Bobble. Well, that's going to make this Luris a lot more appealing for our opponent. Thankfully, we do have the answers. Like, they Luris, get it back, draw a couple cards, but then we kill it, and then we should be... We should... Wow, they're not going for Luris yet. Opponent going to get in and hit us. Yeah, down to eight. We... Opponent gets to draw a card. We draw a Domri. Well, we will play Domri for one mana. We will tick it up. Domri for one mana. Take it up. And we're not gonna play it yet. We're gonna try to combo next turn. Pass the turn. Next turn, we can use Domri mana to get Bard class ultimated. And then hopefully Galia can start the combo turn. We'll see what our opponent does here. Coligan's command, discard a card, two to any target. Um, okay, we'll discard a braid. Opponent cracks Scalding Tarn. Well, I assume they're going on the Creeping Tar Pit plan. Yeah, that's fine. Goes to combat. Well, we will bolt the Tar Pit. Drop to four. But now it's now it's happy fun time. <laughs> Opponent passes. Copper Line Gorge, not helpful. Well, take up for mana. Actually, let's take up this Domri first. Mox Amber, that's actually good. Take up for mana. Ultimate Bard class. Level three. Free Galea. Draw two. Rada. Draw two. Mox Amber. Draw two. Play a mountain. Clothis. Draw two. An opponent cannot overcome the combo. And the opponent had a ton of removal, a ton of interaction, but event like that is a power bard class. That is a power bard class. Once you get to the level three, we just win. We just win. Like that part of the deck has definitely been working. Sometimes we get run over. Sometimes we don't draw bard class, but oh my goodness, is it busted. It's so sweet. It's so, so sweet. Well, <laughs> bard class, not bad. Not bad at all. So what do we learn this week about Bard Class Legend Storm and the deck? 
Oh, it can do spectacular things. It can do ridiculously spectacular things. We saw those ridiculously spectacular things where if we fully level up a bard class, almost every time we are able to just play our entire deck, play a ton of stuff, and either win the game by attacking, lightning wielding our opponent, or our opponent just realizes what's happening. And after we play like 20 cards, they just scoop it up. So the combo is absolutely spectacular it worked really really well the only downside of the deck is if we don't draw bard class things are a little bit jankier we still can win we did see a couple of non-bard class wins where you just kind of like play ragavads and curve out with weird janky legends and attack and that can get there in some matchups but if we don't have bard class we start to feel the pinch of the legends a little bit because remember because everything in our deck is legendary outside of lightning bolt well, and Bard class, we can't have like multiple Ragavans going or Galeas or Zergos or Domries with the same name. So that means we do occasionally run into situations where we end up legend ruling ourselves and can't really build that big of a board. If we have Bard class going, it's fine. Like we cast the second Ragavan, it's free. It's drawing us two cards. Sure, it legend rules, but it's still a free draw too, which is absolutely absurd. So there is some consistency issues inherent with a deck full of legends, but my God is the power level of this deck high and this is the deck that i think is just going to keep getting better we get a lot of legends these days and as we get more legends we can replace some of the weaker ones like trognar it's in the deck because it's free it's not a great modern card there's a two mana two two with some upsides i guess that you can potentially pump in or whatever but really that's not a card we're excited to play in modern or maybe we get another good legendary one drop or maybe we get some more legendary planeswalkers to replace some of the domries so this is a deck that I think is going to keep getting better because the combo is just bard class. It's a one card combo. It's got a big deck building restraint. We got to play a ton of legends, especially legends that can be free. But bard class is really all we need, like bard class in a legend in hand. If we fully level up the bard class, we just win the game. Like that's the combo. You don't need anything else to make it happen. So as we get more legends, the deck should get even better. And even right now. How do we see this deck do some ridiculous, spectacular, draw 40 cards, make not infinite, but tons of extra mana, play our entire deck shenanigans. So I love this deck. This deck is really sweet. It's really cool. It's really unique. Anyway, that has been Bard Class Legends Storm. That has been our much improved for this week. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.